The American Tier 9 destroyer Benham, which is being captained by Das Mata, is what we'll be watching in today's game. Now, quickly before starting, I must tell you this is from 2021, so the game is a little older, but still a great performance and hopefully you might learn something from the game. Now, getting into it, this was one of the Tier 8 and 9 ranked battles, and it's on the map Hotspot. Whilst getting into the battle, we'll take a quick look at the ship, and as he's firing his torpedoes, you'll see why the ship is considered grossly overpowered. Look at that reload time. It's a fraction over a minute, and you've got four water launches, which is pretty insane. Now, this isn't the base reload, but the build he's got currently will be on screen, so you're going to know what he's working with, and that's with a 21-point commander. As for the upgrades, they are also very torpedo-focused, and variations of this build are how you'll want to use this boat. Uh, you can choose something like radio location, which can also be quite good, especially when you're alone against another destroyer, so you can kind of run away, use RPF to know sort where they are, and just keep on dumping torpedoes if they're chasing you. Now, of course... With such good torpedoes, Benham does struggle in most other aspects compared to other DDs, and as you can see, even with the additional HP, his HP is abysmal. I mean, the anti-air is pretty much non-existent, but you're going to have that off most of the time anyway, so that's not much of a worry. And then, hopefully in a few moments, we'll be able to see why this isn't considered a gunboat, as he starts unloading the rest of his torpedoes. And just over there, there is the Ignis... Pergatio, which I believe is just a premium version of the Amaki with improved accuracy. Now, the ship hasn't been available to buy for a few years, I believe, and the last time I'm aware it was possible to attain was the first iteration of the Rogue Wave event, where it was added to the game, and which is where I actually managed to pick mine up, and here we go, we can see him unloading onto the Lo Yang, which also has the pretty much the same amount of HP as the Benham, and does actually get quite a few salvos there, and take, yeah, 2,300 damage, so pretty decent, but... Now you can see there's currently a radar going on, and that I, I'm going to assume is the Riga, which is just about 10.5 kilometers away. And this Ignis Pergatio, or Amagi, is pushing basically into the Benham strengths, and this is probably the first thing you're going to be, I guess, learning from this game, which is how not to deal with a Benham, or I guess any destroyers at this sort of range in this kind of position, which... He's just going straight for him. I mean, he's sort of pushing in there and eight torpedoes with a little bit over half HP. And that ship is the first one. Yep, there we go. Boom. To be knocked out. Allowing Das Matter to get the first blood and devastating strike award. And manages to get five torpedo hits, getting up to 40,000 damage. Now, as I was saying, it was added in the Rogue Wave event. I think it was available to get for like around a month or something. Um, and I assume this is where Das Mata got his as well, plus he's got the special commander. Um, it's like Dr. Echasser, I'll probably put an image on screen if I can find one whilst I'm editing this. But uh, yeah, that is basically how you don't push a destroyer when you're in a battleship, and they certainly pay the price, so it is now going to be a bit more of an advantage for the friendly team. Now, the rest of the team, we'll just take a look at the map real quick. So there were, most of them are going towards the B cap, but... That might not be a bad thing, even if it's just leaving two people alone, because if Death Matter and the Tippets can hold C, that's going to allow the rest of the team to go up the map, push A, hopefully overwhelm them, and then possibly come back round to C. And that is if Death Matter's side does knock them out first or get knocked out, but I do believe they were asking the Atlanta, not the Atlanta, the Alaska, sorry, to start coming back up, and it's quite good they listen, because the Alaska does have access to radar, and that is another ship that has been removed. Now, the Loyang was spotted there and is currently firing on Das Matter, but thankfully he positioned his, well, sorry, positioned himself incredibly well, where he's able to just go straight forward. He's also still got his engine boost active, of which you've got two different consumables. You've got the long American smoke screen and you've got the engine boost. But unfortunately, the Riga does pop his radar, allowing him to get some shots off. Knocks out 2000 HP, but thankfully, that's matter is able to start getting around the corner, plus he's dropping his smoke as well, so if he needs to use that in a short period of time, he will be able to use that too. Gets a few shots over to the Riga and does a bit of extra damage. Now, in terms of the cap control, it is still just a fact of whoever dies first here, so you can currently see in the top left of the cap, we have got the Alsace coming towards the cap as well, so coming for reinforcements. But that is a bit worrying for Das Matter and the rest of his team. Oh. 
that could have been the end of this amazing replay with just 50,000 damage, but manages to thread that needle incredibly well there, and thankfully the Alaska does pop their radar, so that does get the Loyang spotted. Is going straight towards those torpedoes, so that's matter goes, okay, well, we'll drop some torpedoes. Hopefully we'll hit something, but just as you can see there, there is a smoke popping up, and they must have just dodged those torpedoes, unfortunately. Does get another reload, and already you can see that first set that he fired off. Yeah, they are going to be reloaded in 35 seconds, which just shows you how powerful this thing can be, and I mean, in terms of destroyers, they are always going to be at a bit of an advantage, or at least torpedo boats, when the enemy team is pushing you, because it's going to be easier for you to hit your torpedoes, but when you get that sort of sort of situation in the Benham, and I've seen many videos where people have gotten up to like 300k in this thing, just from entire teams pushing them, where they just keep on dumping their torpedoes and keep on getting damaged, and that's probably what we're going to be seeing later on into this replay. Now, with Das Matter on this side of the smoke, he's still not spotting the Luoyang, the Tirpitz is sort of spotting him from the other side, meaning they are probably still in that smoke, so he fires a couple of torpedoes off there, and also manages to get a nice hit on that Riga there, so gets a flooding and another 10,000 damage. But as you can see, yep, yeah, there they are, they start firing. Doesn't really even need to fire his guns, because you can see those torpedoes are coming in, and manages to confirm his second kill allowing the cap to be freed of anyone that is contesting it so the friendly team can start knocking it out. Now, I'll move your attention back to the map here again for a second, just so you can kind of see what's going on. We've got the Alsace, the Tirpitz, and the Riga all trying to go for the C cap, whilst the P well, sorry, the A cap is pretty much alone. There's an enemy Z44, I believe it is, and the Brindisi, but there are two battleships and a cruiser and a destroyer on that side of the map, meaning they're going to be able to get that, and with three ships on this side, it's looking very bad for the enemy team. Now, the Riga is already quite low on HP. I mean, the Turbits was on 40,000 HP, but they have been knocked all the way down to, well, pretty much uh, over half of that, and the Alsace is starting to push, basically doing the same thing that Ignis Perdigatio was doing earlier this game, and... Again, this is probably the only thing you can really take from this game is, I mean, if you don't really play Venom or generally just Destroyers, is just don't get this close to them. I mean, they're, they're sort of wide in the open. I mean, yeah, the Turbitz is down to 7,000 HP and fortunately does get spotted by the Turbitz, but gets back into his smoke to carry on firing. But they obviously uh, haven't got to a, a or D key on their keyboard going in a completely straight line down to 6,000 HP. They got knocked out, and surprisingly, the Jumbard on the other side of the map, who was holding a very nice position there, because I was wondering why they weren't really repositioning where they were, but the Jumbard was actually setting up a very nice crossfire and managed to knock out that Riga, so that's the threat of radar pretty much gone. Now, the Alsace is going against the Alaska, does knock him out, unfortunately, but with such close proximity, that does allow this matter to just keep uploading, well, unloading torpedoes. And already they are down to 30,000 HP, but they are mitigating that with a heal. Of course, at this range, and with the low maneuverability of the Alsace at the moment, because they have just stopped, they are going to be in a pretty bad position here, because that's matter can just keep on unloading his torpedoes. So that's the second set he's just unleashed. Already there's only 45 seconds until that first one that reloaded is going to be reloaded again. Manages to get two torpedo hits there, gets a flooding, and I believe they were already flooding before as well, so that is a permanent flood and gets another hit there, so that's probably going to be 30,000 HP down. They are probably only going to be on a couple thousand HP. Yep, there we go, 2,000 HP also starts firing here with his main batteries and confirms his fourth kill with a flood, and that is pretty much it for this cap. A wonderful play there from not only Das Matter, but also his friendly teammates there, but since he's going to be just going to try and find the rest of the ships, I'm going to sort of fast forward this bit because it is just, it's Das Matter, he's just repositioning and trying to hunt down this enemy destroyer. And the only other ship is the Brindisi, which is currently versing a Garo and a Massachusetts. But as you can see, some things have changed now, so the B cap has actually been taken, meaning we've got a sort of rough idea where the Z44 is, so it is going to be in the direction that Das Matter is heading, but... This is why I'd sort of go with RPF instead of the improved engine speed, but it is down to personal preference because you might value speed over that RPF because you can obviously reposition. And those torpedoes there also give you a very good indication of where that enemy destroyer is, but already with 144,000 and the amount of ships that are left, 
it is looking like it's going to be a win, but it's just the fact of can Das Matter manage to get any further kills, or just even damage to bolster his already amazing damage number up. Now because the speed at which these torpedoes reload, you might as well just fire them, which, which he is doing. Also goes for some widespread, just in case he's able to catch anything out. And already those first that he fired, the ones that are literally just in front of him there, 30 seconds till they reload. It's just an incredible ship. I think you can still get them in the Santa crates, so you know there is a chance to still get this, but if you do, it is an amazing boat to play because well, you've, you've got access to this, and when you do have flanks pushing you, you can get some brilliant results. Now, speaking of which, the Z44 has just been spotted, and they are slowing down at possibly the worst possible time that they could. Yeah, those torpedoes are looking pretty good, aren't they? Especially that one at the back. It does smoke up so we can't actually see him, but that torpedo goes in, manages to get the Confederate award, so he's managed to do a decent amount of damage to a lot of different ships. So they should already be down about 10,000 HP, leaving them probably on about 9,000 HP. Of course, Das Matter is also starting to chuck a few shells into there and actually get a couple of blind shots, which is very nice. Doesn't get any more, but it's just really now get straight in, try and do as much damage, and hopefully surprise the Zed. I mean, it's probably not going to be too much of a surprise because he knows that the Venom's already here, but actually manages to get a torpedo kill as they're escaping, getting the Kraken unleashed, and with 950 points left and the Britain DC, I'm assuming they kind of got sick of the result of this game, so they're trying to go into the other map. That does really conclude this game, so we'll head over to the end result screen. And what a result that was. Evidently he had got some sort of modifiers on because 1.3 million credits in itself is great, but as you can see the heroic achievements managed to get the Confederate, the Devastating Strike, the Kraken Unleashed, First Blood and High Caliber Award with 160,000 damage is just phenomenal. Now of course some people are like, oh 160 is not that much. Keep in mind this is still a ranked game so the available health pool to take is a lot smaller so Considering that there's a lot less ships and a lot less HP, that is a brilliant amount of damage to get. Now, we'll also take a quick look at the team score, and it is no surprise that Das Matter is on the top by a very wide margin. Pretty much double the Massachusetts, which is just below him, so really shows you how well he's played. But with all that said, I'd like to thank Das Matter for submitting this game, as it was very enjoyable to watch, and hopefully you guys are able to learn something too, but that does bring us to the end of the video. So, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.